I keep watch. You leave, you call me. The wind rises. Honestly. Unnecessary. Fury. The wind rises. Well, we made it. But with the force of this waterfall, there's no way we're getting through. Quick. Take out the dragon scale. into toy blocks, so... <gasps> Aha! You want to use it to block off the water! See? Paimon can figure things out all on her own! the value on this. What's wrong, Milo? Oh, nothing. It's just... 
I sensed a very powerful magical signature just now. Huh. Guess this is the dragon's lair after all. Huh? When did you put your hat on? Well, we're getting ready to fight, aren't we? I feel more comfortable in my regular outfit. Hat Guy also put away that sword around his waist. Ah, oh, should have never had to use this thing to begin with. Do... do you need to do anything to prepare, Traveler? Paimon's getting kind of nervous seeing everyone else serious like this. This space is completely empty. I'm on bet this is where the dragon sleeps. Watch out in front! It's coming! He's here. Ah, another new soul has joined this world. But are you sure his fate will be as you described? Of course. My predictions are never wrong. I just don't like that kind of story. Then you need only do as you said, and let him find his own story within your fairy tale. <laughs> You're right. 
Then listen closely, my child. Your name is... Am I going to have to save you? Thank you, hat guy. Uh, Paimon still feels dizzy. Um, hey, did any of you also see something strange? It was like we were witnessing... The dragon's memories. Sounds like we all saw the same thing just now. Well, we definitely saw a different side to the story. Watching it all unfold, Paimon couldn't help but feel... Bad for the dragon. This world might be a lot more complicated than we thought. The next time we encounter the dragon, how about we try talking to him instead of fighting? That sounds like a good plan. But maybe we should figure out where we ended up first. Huh. If the world above is a fairy tale realm, then maybe we've fallen into the next page of the book. Uh, just keep walking and don't fall behind. Uh, hey, wait for us! Wow, this place looks a lot different from the dragon lair. Fury. <laughs> Too slow. Yeah. 
on, Fury! Following me. Our home! It was destroyed by that evil dragon! The, the stars! It flew away with the Metropole stars! Oh, no! We... We didn't get eaten by the dragon? The dragon just dropped us off here? Just up ahead. Is he trying to lure us somewhere? Well, I'd say we were the ones who backed him into a corner. But we just want to ask him a few questions about his past. He's had year after year of people coming here to try to take his head. If you ask me, his reaction is perfectly normal. Maybe there's still something we can do to calm him down? I wouldn't count on it. Maybe his earlier attacks were just a warning, but now, he's actually getting serious. Prepare for a final battle. Sometimes, it takes a little force for someone to finally wake up. this time. You're dead!
Expected hit! Inside the black mist? Oh, I see something up ahead. Quit following me. Huh, too slow. Are you sure you want to create this child, M? Even after what I told you about his fate? <sighs> He will be abandoned by his creator, and eventually... I know, B. You've told me already. That sad story with the disappointing ending. It's what happened in the real world, isn't it? But that's exactly why I want to change things. In a different world, his story can have a happier ending... That child, his heart is so full of love. I understand, Anya, but know that if you give him that name, his fate in Simulanka is destined to parallel that of his real-world namesake. But there's still a chance, right? Maybe it's a shot in the dark, but I have to try. He deserves a better life. Although, he might need the help of others when the time comes. All right, my dear. The choice is yours. Since you're so persistent, let me tell you a secret. Hmm. <sighs> More boring fate talk. I'm sorry, my child. Unlike my friends, I don't have a long time to live. All said and done, the story of my life will be shorter than the fairy tales in this book. So I will have to leave your side, I'm afraid. It's okay. It's okay. Once I'm gone, I will become a star in Simulanka and watch over you from above. If you ever feel lonely, just look up towards the sky. <sighs> Go forth and witness this world, my child. Make sure to be nice to everyone. You'll meet good friends one day. I'm sure of it. That is my wish for your future. As for this world, I leave it to you. Hmm. So in the end, you're betrayed too. Dragon, he brought you some food. You must be hungry. <laughs> Shh, quiet. We can't let anyone hear us. Everyone says you're a bad dragon, but you're always nice to me when we play together. You always help me pick flowers way up high that I can't reach. <laughs> it's okay. Just keep hiding here, and tomorrow I'll... 
Oh no, my child! Help! Somebody help me! Save my child! The dragon's trying to kidnap her! No, Mom! It's not like that! Listen to me! <sighs> so you're hated by people too. So that's it. That's really your wish? To never have been born at all? That's not a fate you should wish for. Nobody can define who you are. Or deny the true feelings of your heart. Now remember your name. Durin. It's all right now. Are you guys all right? Back in Constellation Metropole, I heard people saying you'd gone to fight the dragon, so I followed you here. Right when I managed to catch up, I saw you fall through that hole. Wait, didn't someone else fall through just now? Shouldn't we do something? Oh yeah, that guy. Well, he can fly, so he'll probably be fine. He called the dragon something earlier. It sounded like he said... Durin. That's his name. Oh, Hat Guy, you're okay. Wait, what about the dragon... Durin? He's fine. Durin... Wait, that's the name of the dragon from Dragon's Fine, right? The one that became a part of the mountain after being slain by Dvalin? If Paimon remembers correctly, it was created by... Right, it was created by Rhinegotter! <sighs> Created, you say? Huh. So, what exactly happened down there? You've been acting weird ever since the end of the fight. <sighs> so that's the truth about Simulanka's evil dragon. What we saw in the mist weren't hallucinations, but the dragon's memories. I thought it was strange. The people around the Broken Sea are clearly stranded, but I never heard any stories about the dragon attacking the village. The people we met along the way are probably workers from the Titanium Mines, or guards who came here to claim the dragon's head. Durin probably allowed them to live here because there was nowhere else for them to go. When I first came to this world, a voice spoke to me and said, you are the hero of this world. Now go forth and save the dragon. Huh. Who is the person behind this voice anyway? And why did they bring us all here? Come with me. The answer to all this can be found below. Is this... a study? That's right. It belongs to the Goddess of Fate. Goddess of Fate? 
As in one of the three goddesses who created Simulanka? Or more precisely, M. One of the mages of the Hexen Circle. Hexen Circle? As in... Sorry, Paimon shouldn't just regurgitate everything you say, it's just... It's a lot to take in! She created the story of Durin. Well, the Simulanka version, at least. These records should cover most of what you want to know, including the identities of the other two goddesses. Read them for yourselves. By all rights, I should have been A, since A is the first and last letter of my name. But Alice overruled me on the basis of seniority and said I should be M instead because of my middle name. <laughs> she really knows how to push my buttons. Still, her magic never fails to amaze me. I still can't believe she got one of my origami frogs to start talking. Hmm. Why don't I write a story with origami animals as the main characters? Let's see. Once upon a time, in a magical forest, there lived a group of animals made of paper. Barbie loves looking into the future, so she used her powers to map out the fates of all living things in Simulanka. But knowing the ending in advance takes all the fun out of the story. I think I'll make a bet with her. I believe that one day, the people of Simulanka will decide to carve their own destiny. Oh, apparently, she wants to build a statue of herself in the capital city. <laughs> Always looking to add some pizzazz. My dear sisters, I fear my pen shall soon run dry. Even now, as I write this letter to you, my dexterity is all but failing me. Thank you for enjoying my stories and for creating this world for me. The time we spent together was the most wonderful youth I could have asked for. <laughs> I always feel so young when we're together. A says that even after I'm gone, the goddess of fate in Simulanka will continue to exist and carry on granting people's wishes. It makes me glad. If you ever want to chat, feel free to pay a visit to the goddess statue. Just don't wish for anything weird. It's Simulonka Duran, and he's looking up at something. A star. This must have been after M passed away. This looks like a mine. Maybe the Titania miners dug too deep? So deep that they dug right through to the world on the next page. Yeah. And now that you mention it, this miner's lamp looks really similar to the star on the previous page. The Forest of Blessings. This book has been recording Simulanka's history all along. Look at the size of those footprints. If that's every time he lands, then no wonder people are so terrified of him. So that's why you took the stars. Because you missed your mom. Huh. That statue looks different from the one in the Metropole. It's a different goddess. This one is the goddess of fate. <sighs> it 
It's all right now, Durin. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Don't say that, Durin! I Paima made a mistake. She was wrong about you. But it's nice to talk, isn't it? Now that we've all calmed down? So that's why you made that wish? <sighs> so stupid. Hey! Anyone with eyes can see that all you want to do is get along with everyone. You just want to make friends. People to play with. To talk to. People who accept you. Or at least, accept your apology. Oh, you've never hurt anyone. Heck, the idea never even crossed your mind. Sure, you scared a bunch of people half to death, but that's only because they had no idea what kind of dragon you really are. Yeah! If you had a heart-to-heart -heart with them, I'm sure they'd come to understand you and see your point of view. <laughs> the curse... Huh? Is it your true wish to live side by side with the people of Simulanka? <laughs> then close your eyes and make a wish to the goddess of fate. We will help make your wish come true. <laughs> Just trust me. I... Nilu, the forest fairy, give to you my blessing, and welcome you as a dweller of the forest. May everyone accept you as one of our own, and may the forest of blessings be a place you can call home. I, Navia, king of Constellation Metropole, give you my blessing. I grant you citizenship to my kingdom. Oh, me too! As the, uh... Nekomata in Boots of this World, I give you my blessing, too. Wait, what's going on? <sighs> I, the hero of this world, give you my blessing. I recognize you as a resident of Simulanka. May you find acceptance in this world. Also, Speaking as someone who'd like to be your friend, I wish you all the best for the future. I, a traveler who has traversed many worlds, give to you my blessing. May you find friendship and goodwill no matter where you go. As for this world, I leave it to you. Huh? What? Why are you all staring at me? Huh? My... my claws? Are these my claws? And my wings? Oh, my tail? Does this mean... Oh, wow! You look so cute! Quite a radical transformation! Uh, not that there was anything wrong with the way you looked before, of course. It's just... Uh, you get what I mean. How do you feel? Are you happy with your new appearance? Does anyone have a flower with them? Or even just some water or paper from this world? Oh, I 
going to, actually. Here you go. They're... they're not changing. I can touch things without changing them. Hey, that's great! One more flying friend for Paimon! Now the residents of Simulanka won't be scared of you anymore. Hmm. But what about all the things that I did before? That's simple. Just go out there and atone. You could fill in the footprints you left on the ground. Or help the people around the Broken Sea get home. Okay. And you'll come along and help me, right, Hat Guy? Huh? Why would I do that? Uh, because you said you wanted to be my friend. You little... Gah. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Huh? But I thought... <sighs> <sighs> All right, fine. I'll go with you. Really? Yes, really. Lying to you would be no fun anyway. Oh, thank you! You're the first friend to call me by my name! <sighs> Let's go back up. I'm about to suffocate down here. Oh, it feels so good to finally see Hat Guy meet his match. <laughs> yeah, okay. Paimon just never thought we'd see the day, that's all. All right. Let's also head back up then. Uh... Don't be scared, Durin. We'll be right by your side. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your blessings, everyone. Oh, this is the happiest day I've had in a really long time. Ta-da! Surprise, everyone! Ah! Attacking Street Lamp! <laughs> street Lamp? Oh, my. You mean you still don't remember me after all the times we've spoken? I know that voice. It's Mom's friend! Hello there, traveler and friends. And Durin, it's good to see you. You've changed quite a lot. In fact, you look so different that perhaps I should call you Mini Durin. <laughs> Mini Durin, huh? Yeah, I like the sound of that. It's nice being smaller. You must be one of the three goddesses of this world. Are you the goddess of creation? <sighs> yep, that's right. But although it's the most impressive sounding of the three, to be honest, we all made an equal contribution toward the founding of this world. If you've ever read any of M's stories, you'll know just how enchanting the worlds are that she writes about. So enchanting that I just had to step inside and explore it for real. So I got B involved, and with M's consent, created the world of Simulanka. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're getting a little ahead of yourself! First things first! Would you mind explaining what you're doing here? In fact, no! What are we even doing here? <laughs> Don't worry, all will be revealed. After everything you accomplished on your journey, you're free to ask me anything you want. Hmm, let's start with your first question then. I'm here because I sensed a great magic power emanating from the book just now, and I couldn't resist the urge to peek inside and check it out. That must have been when we all gave Minnie Durin our blessings, right? Yes, exactly. In the world of fairy tales, words and emotions often carry far more power than any spell. It's all thanks to your magic that Minnie Durin was able to take this form. Come say hi to me, little one. Oh, look at you. You're as cute as a button. So, what about us? Was it always part of the plan that we'd come here? Uh, plan isn't the word I'd use. If you ask me, I'd say... Fate works in mysterious ways. When Durin of Simulanka made his wish to the goddess of fate, it just so happened that in a world far away, all of you wonderful people were holding a copy of M's fairy tale at that exact moment. And because of your noble and kind souls, you were selected by the goddess of fate to come and save this world. Now that you mention it, that's what I was doing when I was transported here. 
I was reading a fairy tale to some children in the Fluvsandra. I think I just, uh, happened upon an old book and decided to use it as my pillow during a nap in a box. <laughs> wow, what a crazy coincidence. Wait, that's not right. How come everyone else got assigned to roll except us? Because we were also... Yeah, that was it. We just received a strange book and we had no idea who sent it. Then, the moment we opened it up to start reading it, we found ourselves here. You're the one who sent it to us, aren't you? Oh, is that what happened? <laughs> yes, that does sound like me, doesn't it? Hmm, good question. Why indeed? Maybe I thought this was such a good story, it simply had to be read by someone. As the traveler and witness of many worlds, how could I let such a beautiful place pass you by? I can sense that your blessing for Minnie Durin was a very special one. With this blessing from beyond the story, he might even be able to explore worlds outside of this one. To that, you mean? That's right. In fact, back when we were first creating Similanka, M told us that she hoped the people of this world would one day be able to explore the wider world beyond. Every story has an ending, but if the story becomes reality, it should have the right to choose its own path. So, in other words, the predestined lives these people lead were always going to disappear one way or another. Wait, so even if the people here get to go to other worlds, surely there's gotta be a way we can leave too, right? <laughs> Don't you realize you've been able to leave all along? Huh? You can either take the boat at the Broken Sea or touch the giant bookmark at the Cliff of Prophecy. All you need to do if you want to leave is focus on the place you want to go. How were we supposed to know that if you never told us? Huh, didn't I? <laughs> well, given how smart and capable you are, surely it can't have posed a huge problem for you. As for your other friends who were summoned here, if I had to guess, I'd say the Goddess of Fate probably didn't tell them about it because she wanted them to get engrossed in the story. She's Em's reflection, after all. It wouldn't surprise me if she shares Em's love for cliffhangers. Anyway, I think that answers your questions, yes? What do you all plan to do next? I... I'm gonna go say sorry to the people of this world. After that... I want to start protecting Simulanka, just like Mom told me to. Hmm. Now we know how easy it is to get back home, Paimon's suddenly not in such a hurry to leave. Same here. It's not every day that you get to come to such a magical world. I, for one, plan to explore it a little longer. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Maybe I should invite some other friends to join you too. By the way, Minnie Durin, I'm delighted to see you've made some new friends. I'm sure Em would be very proud of you. Now, before I depart, please let me give you a blessing as well. May your future be as rich and colorful as the stories Em used to tell. <sighs> She's gone. Guess this is where the hero's journey comes to an end, huh? Ah, but it's also where a new journey begins. The Adventures of Minnie Durin and Friends. Huh? An adventure for me? You bet. For starters, I'd love to introduce you to my other friends in the forest. Even though there have been some misunderstandings in the past, I'm sure they'll welcome the new you with open arms. Hmm? Huh? Ah, uh, stop looking at me. I already said I'll come with you. Look over there! Wow. The stars are beautiful. Huh. I'll bet that's a gift to Minnie Durin from the three goddesses of this world. Oh. Thank you, Mom. Adventure. 
Oh, Paimon wonders how many Durin is getting along in Simbulanka. Let's go to the Forest of Blessings and take a look. Here's your two magic tonics. Why, thank you, young lady. And might I add that you're looking quite lovely today. Jean, come on, take a seat and let's have a drink. I ordered one for you as well. <sighs> but is this really appropriate? I mean... Still worried about Clee? <laughs> Relax. Albedo's with her. She'll be fine. Oh, look who it is. The Traveler and Paimon. You must be the pleasant surprise that Miss Alice told us about. Greetings to you both. This is one place I didn't expect to run into you two. The locals here have been talking non-stop about some brave heroes who saved the world. Let me guess. You two have been up to your old tricks. Well, not just us. We only played a small part. You could say we were two members of the Heroes Adventure Team. Still sounds mighty impressive to me. As ever, our honorary knight is making us proud wherever they roam. That's right. We received a letter of invitation from Miss Alice, proposing that we take Clee for a vacation in Fairyland when work dies down. I wasn't sure what she meant by Fairyland at first, but if my eyes are not deceiving me, she was being quite literal. Klee ran off excitedly as soon as we arrived. <sighs> I'm a little worried about her, but Albedo insisted he would look after her while we do our own thing. We could hardly say no to such a considerate offer, so I took it upon myself to bring Jean to the nearest tavern we could find. Any excuse for a drink, huh? <laughs> well, we are on vacation. It's only fair that we get to indulge ourselves a little. <laughs> You're right. I should make an effort to relax and unwind. It's what Miss Alice would want, after all. Oh, wait, Kaya! What exactly did you order from the bar? The house special, of course. Best way to get a taste of the local culture. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you making that face, Paimon? Ah, uh, nothing. I was just perpetually amused by your lifestyle, that's all. Go on, drink up! Hmm. Something tells me I need to tread carefully here. Let's see, it's got a lovely color, but how about the taste? <coughs> hmm, I think maybe I'll pass, but it's such a shame to waste it. <laughs> All right, Paimon, well played. Too, if it's any consolation, it's nothing personal. Oh, by the way, we weren't the only ones who got invited here. I saw Kale earlier. She didn't see me, though. She was making a beeline for that big tree. The Kingdom of Breezes and Bells, you mean? Oh, this is turning into a huge reunion. Maybe we should go say hi to her. All right. Well, give her my regards. Thank you. Enjoy your time here, too. So the magic tonic here is just... writing ink? What a weird and wonderful world. Ah, Miss Citrus, do you happen to serve any beverages here that don't contain magic tonic? Of course we do. What flavor would you like? Hmm. Sunsetia. Jean, you want in? <laughs> sure, I'll have the same, please. Sounds good. Two Sunsetia drinks coming right up. The structure of the treehouse is here is nothing short of amazing. I have to write it down, so I can tell Master Tainari all about it later.
scared me. Traveler and Paimon, you got invited here too? Yep. Well, they sort of skipped the invitation part, but anyway, what you doing out here? Something caught your eye? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to observe and summarize the structures of the trees here. And also the animals that live here. Uh, well, the residents, I guess? I still can't get over the fact that they're all someone's origami handiwork. Once a forest ranger, always a forest ranger, huh? Not sure you'll be able to apply much of what you learn here back home, though. With this being a magical world and everything... What? Over there, by the giant footprint, have those houses always been there? Oh, those? The local flying squirrels told me that they were built by a small dragon and some guy wearing a hat. Oh, that must have been Mini Durin and Hat Guy. Uh, any idea where they went? Supposedly, after building the houses, they went to somewhere called, uh... Constellation Metropole? Did I say that right? Yep, you got it! Oh, also, when the locals mentioned the dragon, did they seem at all... Uh... Did they say how they felt about him at all? Hmm... Now that you mention it, the atmosphere changed a little when they talked about him. Oh no... They mentioned some stuff along the lines of... Past misunderstandings and welcoming new members. I only just got here, so... I know very little about what has happened in the past. They seemed genuinely grateful for the houses, though. And said they were going to plan a welcome party. Oh, thank goodness. <sighs> Sounds like the forest has begun to accept him. It's a step in the right direction. Are you looking for that small dragon? Yeah, he's a new friend we made after we arrived here. No way! Really? I'm getting more and more interested in your story. Uh, no, no, no. I've got to save her for next time. For now, I've got to make the most out of my time in this wonderful world. Oh, there's no rush. Just take it slow and enjoy yourself. Like Kaya. Oh, he sends his regards, by the way. Oh, Mr. Kaya is here too? Then I've got to go say hi to him. Well, right now he's at the tavern and he probably won't be leaving until he's drunk. Not that he'll ever reach that point because his alcohol tolerance is so high. Basically, it's Kaya. You know where to find him. <laughs> you make a good point, Paimon. Then I'll focus on exploring for now and go catch up with him later. Shall we go pay a visit to the Metropole Traveler? Maybe Minnie Durin and Hat Guy are still there. Oh, right. By the way, something pretty interesting has been happening in Sumeru recently. Master Trinari has been working really hard on it, so if you have time, definitely go and check it out. Sounds good. We'll found some time in our schedule. Of course. See you later. What? Uh, are my eyes deceiving me? There is no way. I can't believe it. Hey, Mona! We heard you muttering from a long way away. What's up? Oh, is your scry glass acting up again? Oh, it's you, the saviors of this world. My scry glass is fine, but I'm not sure I can say the same about my eyes. Look! Look at this statue! What? Is it broken or something? Looks fine to Paimon. That's your master, right? A.K.A. the Goddess of Prophecy? I refuse to believe it. There's no way that old hag looks anything like this. When she was younger. Oh, actually, now that you mention it, this does remind me of the fashionista phase she wrote about in her diary. <laughs> she can't hear me, can she? I swear I just got chills down my spine. Either way, it's probably a little rude to talk about her right under her statue. But how do you know it's a statue of her if you never saw her as a young woman? I did a quick scry when I came into this world, and when I saw the star's reflections, I was at a loss for words. It looks like fate in Simulanka is based directly on Tevat. A projection of real-world fate to form an image of reality. Or, in layman's terms, uh, basically, the creator made this world inside a mirror or a lake, and this world is the reflection. 
Still sounds pretty impressive. The more I scryed, the more familiar everything looked. It's her work, there's no doubt about it. Even so, everything's far more complex than I'd imagined. Trying to decipher it all is giving me quite a headache. I also asked the locals about her. They call her she who has dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. Not even a pretense of humility. Clearly, she let the role of creator goddess get to her head. Not that I'm surprised in the least, of course. It certainly matches the tone of her diary. <clears throat> anyway, we should change the topic. Oh, so Mona, have you seen a small dragon around by any chance? He's about the same size as Paimon, but with tiny little wings. Ah, you mean the one that caused all that trouble? I haven't seen him for myself, but I heard that he came to the Metropole not long ago to formally apologize for his actions. Apparently, he brought a huge stash of titanium and plant oil to make amends. Most people accepted his apology, although there are some who said that they'll reserve judgment until they've seen how he acts in the future. Oh, okay. Do you know where we can find him? One moment. Like he's at the Broken Sea. There's a big group of people with him, too. Cool! Wanna come with us? We can introduce you! Hmm. I think I'll sit this one out. This might be the closest I ever get to meeting the old hag in our youth, so I think I'll spend some time seeing what else I can glean from her grand design. Uh, you guys have fun. Anytime. We'll be off now. See you later, Mona! There's no need to exchange pleasantry. Squall and Fury! Osvaldo Hafnabines! Does thou see what I am seeing? Tell me that my all perceiving Aug de Verertelung deceiveth me not! Your eyes see true, main Fräulein. Very well. Then, as sovereign ruler of the Imanakreis, I extend to you both my greetings, O oh, Night Dragon from the Land of the Thousand Stars and his hat-wearing servant. Who did you just call a servant? What Main Fräulein means to say is, hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too! <laughs> but Hat Guy's not my servant, he's my friend! Ah, <sighs> now you're over-explaining. Officials with you too? Oh, <laughs> greetings, Outlander, blessed by the Imanakreish. How honored you are to meet your princess in beneath the stars of another sky. Clearly, a decision made by fate itself. Miss Honorary Knight, Paimon! Greetings. You both look well. Have you been having fun here? Yup! Loads and loads of fun! There are so many cute animals! And a magic train that was really long! And a huge, huge castle! And a king lives there and everything! I've been taking Klee to see all the sights. It's been a very enriching experience. Alice's magic is truly outstanding. Yeah, Mom's amazing! Klee wants to build a great big house now, too! So... Your mom and my mom... were friends? Mm-hmm. Our moms were friends, which makes you my big brother! My mom used to read your mom's stories to me all the time. They were great! Big brother? Wow! Thank you, Klee! Can I go play with Klee, Hat Guy? Suit yourself. Albedo! Albedo, can I? Go on. 
Uh, just don't go too far away. I'll come pick you up later. Yay! Come on, Minnie Durin! Do you want to come play with us too, Fischl? <laughs> your princess and accepts your invitation. Rejoice! Though you may be concealed by fog, still you shall have the good fortune to witness the true might of the Aug de Vertelung. What Main Fräulein means to say is, perhaps we can all play hide and seek together. Main Fräulein is it. Hooray! I love hide and seek! Oh, me too! To return to our previous discussion, Mr. Hat Guy, you were telling me about a prophecy? I heard B talking to M. What she said was. Since you're so persistent, let me tell you a secret. Our child will one day rise from the dead. Uh, is she saying that Dragonspine Durin will come back to life? I only heard it in a memory, so don't hold me to it. Understood. My recent observations at Dragonspine lend credence to this prophecy as well. Durin's heart has slowly but surely been growing in vitality. The process is extremely slow, but the trend is clear. Uh, what should we do? To start with, plan for every potential scenario. Including, of course, the worst case scenario. <sighs> I am well aware of Durin's past, and I sincerely hope that things never escalate to that point. Still. We need to be prepared for every possibility. If the prophecy is true, and Durin's heart will one day beat again, I'd like to hope that whatever rises from the dead is no evil dragon, if you understand what I mean. Kind of? But not really. And so, when the time comes, Mr. Hat Guy, will you and Simulanka's Durin be willing to lend us a hand in our hour of need? Huh? What's this got to do with me? You save the Durin of this world. I don't see that as a mere coincidence. If there is any meaning to be read into the actions of the three goddesses, beyond fairy tale whimsy alone, I can only boldly speculate that the fate of this reflected world may have a reciprocal effect upon our own world. If Durin of Dragonspine will soon come back to life, we will need many Durin's help as well as yours, given that your fates are now intertwined. <sighs> well, that's a nuisance. To be sure, it certainly won't be easy. Albedo, Albedo! There's a flying paper ship over there! Can we go see it together, please? Sure. Uh, two seconds, I'll be right with you. Please give my suggestion some thought, Mr. Hat Guy. <sighs> I'm back! Huh? What were you guys talking about? <sighs> Nothing. Um... Huh. Okay, then. Let's go join the others. Everyone's going to check out the new origami ship. <sighs> All right. I'll be right there. Why would I be? Do I strike you as someone who cares about other people's issues? Quit trying to guess what I'm thinking. I'm leaving. Oh, what a lovely little boat! The forest fairy helped us make it! I just realized there's a lot fewer people around the Broken Sea now. Guess most of them have made their way back to the Metropole. Does this boat have a name? I can't see one anywhere. Huh? A name? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every boat has a name. At least, all the ones I've seen before. They're usually symbolic names that represent something aspirational. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go with... the Durin. Huh? You want to name it 
After me? Oh, you mean to wish Mini Duran a safe voyage as he sails into a new chapter of his life beyond this world? Your princess and approves. Let this vessel bear the name of the most esteemed dragon of the night. The Turin. <laughs> Let's call it that then. Thank you, hat guy. Also, can I ask you a favor? Go on. Remember how Mom's friend said I should be able to leave this world? Well, I want to pay a visit to your world. Just a quick trip, can we? Huh? Oh, is... is that a no? Pilot thinks that's a great idea! If the people of Simulanka are allowed to go to Tevat, then what's the problem with taking Mini Turin there for a visit? I'm assuming I'll have to be your bodyguard while we're there. I... I can protect myself! And I'll do what you say. I won't fly off on my own, I promise! Please, can I go? <sighs> It'll be up to you to stick close. If you disappear on me, don't expect me to come looking. Got it! I'll stick close! Why don't you take the Durin? Now you've given it a name, It'll be a maiden voyage for the boat, and a brand new journey for you. Are you leaving, Mini Doran? Okay. Well, make sure you come visit me in Mondstadt so we can play together again. Klee will draw you a map to show you the way. Though our time together has been as fleeting as a ray of light in the depths of the long night, the Imanokreish will welcome you with the grandest of music ceremonies on the occasion of our next reunion. As surely as the stars in the sky watch over us, we shall meet again. What Main Fräulein means is that you're always welcome to visit her at home as well. Cool! Oh, I have so many new friends now! I'm so happy! <sighs> Are you done yet? If you want to leave, then get over here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. The blessings you gave me are more precious than any treasure and more beautiful than any fairy tale. Next time, it will be my turn to make your wishes come true. Yeah.